Hi guys, so I'm sorry to say this, but there's just over a month and a half left of 2018. I'm finding that slightly unbelievable, but don't we all say that any time time passes, so I won't dwell on it too long. But I thought that there are some books I would really like to make sure that I read before this year is out for whatever reason. Some of them are book club reads, some of them um, re relate to goals I set myself at the beginning of the year and a few are just books that um, I, I just really have been meaning to read and, and don't want to enter the new year without having read them. So I thought I would do an end of year TBR so hopefully I can read these books um, before 2018 comes to a close and I think that is possible given how much I'm reading at the moment the length of these books and how many there are I think it's an achievable goal so without further ado let's get into the books I'll start with the two most pressing books because they are for book clubs that I am in so have to read and the first one is Kindred by Octavia E. Butler this is a science fiction novel one of the first science fiction novels published by a black woman it was originally published in the 1970s and I believe that that's what they say I don't know if that only refers to English but Octavia E. Butler is incredibly famous within the science fiction world and this is the feminist orchestra read for November December which is the feminist book club I run with Lauren over at Lauren Wade reads um, and if you want to join in we have a Goodreads group really easy to participate so I have only heard good things about this is about a woman living in 1970s America who keeps time traveling but she has no control over it into the past in different points in this one young white man's life and in each point she has to save his life because otherwise somehow her family won't come to exist. And she's travelling back to times when America still had slavery so it's very dangerous for her, it's like a big um, sort of eye opener for her and I think this is just going to be an absolutely phenomenal read. The other book I have to read, uh, but want to read it, is Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi. This is actually a retelling of the Greek myth of Antigone, but it's set in contemporary day Britain and follows a family who are kind of struggling with a few different things. One of the brothers has um, kind of gotten himself involved in religious extremism and it's about how the family are dealing with that, him and his sisters, their relationships with their parents. I'm drawing on themes for Antigone but very much its own novel and again I've only heard amazing things about this book and this is actually the book club read for my Patreon book club so over on Patreon I host a book club where we pick a book together and read it over the course of two months and again this is our November December pick. But moving on from book club reads I do have another book which I'm actually buddy reading with a friend of mine so again we'll definitely be getting to it and that is Dreamer's Pool by Juliette Morelli. This is the first in the Blackthorn and Grimm series by Juliette Morelli which is obviously a series I haven't started yet. I have um, started and made progress in three of Juliette Morelli's other series. I'm a big, big fan of her fantasy works. But me and my friend Lauren, who is the same one that I run the Feminist Orchestra with, are planning on reading this together in November and I cannot wait because Juliette Morelli just writes the most gorgeous high fantasy novels set in kind of medieval settings. I'm not sure what the location is for this one. I've, set, I've read ones by her set in Romania, Ireland and Scotland before. The opening sentence says, in order to escape death, embittered healer Blackthorn promises to forgo vengeance against the man who destroyed her life and to assist anyone who asks for her help. Accompanied by a former prison mate, a silent hunk of a man named Grimm, she finds a home in Dalriada on the fringe of a mysterious forest. I just think this is going to bring together all my favourite things about Juliette Morelli's writing so I'm excited to start a new series by her. And then moving on to one of my goals for this year which was to read more ancient Greek tragedies. So I have a overall goal of reading all of the works by Sophocles, Aeschylus and Euripides who are the three uh, classical Greek tragedians whose works survive to today and I have read over half of them. I think there's around 33 including one play which is a satyr play so a comedy by Euripides and I've, I've read, again, like I said, I've read over half of those and I've managed to read two new ones this year that I hadn't read previously but I would like to finish off 2018 with having read at least one more. Um, potentially two more if I can squeeze them in. They are short, they are plays after all, um, but if I can at least read one more then I would be happy. Some of the ones I'm considering reading are um, Oedipus at Colonus, which is the third Theban play in 
so it follows the characters of Oedipus, Jocasta, Antigone, um, from, from that myth, and Oedipus the Clonus technically follows on from Oedipus the King and comes before Antigone, although they're not like officially a trilogy, but chronologically they do. And I've read Oedipus the King and Antigone, so I'm debating reading Oedipus the Clonus, but equally I might read some Euripides. I'm holding up this collection, I've actually read everything in this collection. Um, so maybe this one. Um, this has got the Cyclops in it, which is actually the satyr play, so maybe I'll read that. Or Children of Heracles, which I haven't read. So I've got access to all of those plays, um, and it's just about squeezing them in. If you have any favourite ancient Greek tragedies, let me know, and maybe I will prioritise that one. The next book I have a physical copy of, because I actually have reserved at my library. I'm just waiting for it to come in so I can go pick it up. And that is Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend. This is the second book in her Nevermore series, or the Trials of Morrigan Crow series. I read the first book this year. It's a middle grade children's book that has been getting so much hype. I am sure you've heard about it. It's about a young girl who's cursed to die on her 11th birthday but instead is whisked away by a strange man called Jupiter who takes her to uh, Nevermoor to uh, sort of complete certain quests so that she can get into the Wondrous Society and Wondersmith follows on from book one. I love this series. It's the most I have enjoyed a children's book series as an adult that I hadn't previously read as a child. So I'm super excited to see what happens next. I think this is like just such a fun journey, amazing characters, fantastic world, can't wait for the sequel. I then have a non-fiction book I'd like to read and that is Nkrumah and the Gamma Revolution by C. L. R. James. I'm not sure if this book is still in print. So apologies if it's not, but that's not going to stop me from reading it. This copy was my dad's and he recommended it to me last year, um, shortly before he passed away because I really want to learn more about Africa's history. The Ghana was the first um, African country to get its independence from the British Empire after this revolution. And my dad specialised in African history at university and so it was something he had a lot of books on and uh, was very knowledgeable about. So I would like to read some of those books and this seemed like a short one. Uh, one that was on one specific country and one event that I could get into without having tons of background. C.L.R. James is also like a very famous historian um, in this field, very well respected. So I'm really excited to read this. I actually recently lent it um, to my boyfriend who read it and I'm starting to feel like he's read it and I've still not read it so come on Jean get on with it um so I want to read this before the year's out it's not long it's kind of an accumulation of writings brought together as kind of CLR James muses on the progression of the Ghana revolution so it's not all written at one time but very, very interested to read this and learn a little bit more about African history and read a book that my dad highly recommended. But in our exchange, uh, my boyfriend lent me Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin, so I obviously want to get to this because I'm borrowing it from somebody. Um, and again, very, very short one. I read some of James Baldwin's non-fiction essays this year and really enjoyed them. Um, and this is one of his most famous fiction books. It follows a gay couple in Paris in the 1950s. Days, yes, in 1950s Paris, um, and they're kind of struggling with the relationship. One of them in particular um, kind of sees his life as being easier if he marries this woman, so um, that obviously <laughs> interrupts their love affair, and yeah, it's about, about their relationship and um, being gay in the 1950s in France. So again, really highly respected novel, highly respected author. Can't wait to read it. Next up, I have a book that I've sent for review that I'm super excited about, and that is The Seafarer's Kiss by Julia M. The sequel to this actually just came out, but this is a Little Mermaid inspired fairy tale retelling, but it is a queer retelling, so it involves a romance between two female characters, and you know how much I have been looking for um, fantasy novels in particular with uh, female female romances in them this year. Um, trust me, they're a lot harder to find than um, heterosexual romance in fantasy, so I'm super super excited for this, I just think what what more could I want from a book? Um, can't wait to read it. I was also sent a copy of Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan, which was recently adapted as a film, and I would really like to watch the film, but I would like to read the book first. So I'm thinking it might be a film I watch around Christmas time if it's come out to watch like streaming or like downloading on Amazon or something by then. And hopefully I will have read the book before that happens. So this book has had so much praise. I remember first hearing about it on Joss from Scribble Reads channels. 
and wanting to read it since I heard about it there um, and obviously it's just grown in popularity since the film came out so I, I, no excuses anymore since I've been sent a copy um, it is about this young woman who is engaged to this young man um, she goes to meet his family and it turns out they are this exceedingly wealthy family in uh, Singapore uh, which she was not expecting and it's a bit of like a uh, kind of culture shock for her and I think it's also a bit of like a comedy novel, it's a romance novel and it sounds like a lot of fun. I have one more book on this list that is actually sent by the publishers and that is The Corset by Laura Purcell. I actually had the first chapter of this last night so I might be reading it very soon. Um, and this is a historical fiction book about two characters, one of whom is a wealthy young woman who um, is trying to be very virtuous and she set up this charity where they kind of help women in prison and she goes to visit the women prisoners and she's kind of obsessed with phrenology and convinced that she can learn what turns women into murderers from the shape of their skull. So she visits women in prison and our second character is a woman in prison who has been convicted of murdering her mistress. She was a servant um, and I don't know much more than that, that's kind of just what's happening but it's meant to be quite a dark book, it's kind of did she do it, did she not do it, is there something bigger and um, more terrifying going on than just this one murder, we shall find out. It reminds me a little bit of the premise of Alias Grace by Mark Atwood which I love so I'm so there for this. But there are two more books on my TBR so let's quickly get to them. The first one is The Book of Phoenix by Nnedi Okorafor. I'm having quite the Nnedi Okorafor binge this year. I've read four books by her and love them and I really want to get to this one next. This one sounds a little bit more on the science fiction side of things. She writes a mixture of science fiction and fantasy and it follows this character Phoenix who has been experimented on and created in a lab and she's escaped from this lab and has all these powers and people are on the hunt for her. Um, I, I said before that the premise reminded me a little bit of the TV show Dark Angel. I don't know if it's anything like that but that's what I'm going into it in, within my head. But Nnedi Okorafor is an incredible writer and I just want to keep consuming her books so I'm excited to get to this one. And lastly I'd like to read Tori Heaven or Thunder on the Right by Marganita Lasky. This is a book published by Persephone who publish Books are out of print, predominantly written by women that they kind of want to give an, an, a second chance in the world. And I own two books from Persephone and haven't read either of them and I think that's a tendency of people to buy Persephone books because of the gorgeous covers um, but not read them as much and I don't want to end up with any more of these books that I haven't read them so this one just sounds brilliant. It was actually written in the 1940s and is a dystopian based on a world in which the Conservative Party are in charge of the United Kingdom and have introduced very, very strict class um, kind of categories in society which affect uh, what people can do and how they can live, etc, etc. The slightly disturbing thing about this is that in the United Kingdom we currently do live under Conservative government and there is massive, massive gaps between the poor and the rich as it is. So this is one of those dystopian books that you know, was kind of uh, on it. It's just quite a few years later, so this one's going to be really interesting to read, I think. But those are the books currently on my TBR for the end of the year. Hopefully I will manage to get to most of these books, if not all of them, by the end of the year. Let me know if you've read any of them and can recommend them to me, uh, which ones um, did you prefer. Just let me know your thoughts in general and I'd also love to know if there's anything that you want to make sure you read before 2018 comes to an end. Do let me know in the comments down below. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys!